Hello everyone. Welcome to AI Anytime channel. This is going to be the 11th video in the MCP playlist model context protocol. I have been creating, you know, this video is step by step, you know, in a hierarchical manner within model context protocol playlist for you to better understand MCP and cut the hype. Like people have been sharing each other's post on LinkedIn and social media and just talking about MCP, but they don't have any clue how it really works, right? So just to simplify that, I have, I have been creating this playlist. And in this 11th video of the MCP playlist, we're going to look at the uh, a protocol that we have within MCP. It's a communication protocol, uh, HTTP plus SSE. We have been so far looking at standard input output. But in this video, we're going to look at HTTP and SSE and how you can build your own client server communication you don't have to rely on cloud for desktop or, or you know those any other uh, client let's say open a, open ai agents hdk or goose ai or cloud for desktop or jp or whatever how can you locally build and you know bring this communication between client and server so let's jump in and see how we can do it now i have been creating a notion template for myself uh, you know to to study mcp later revise it whenever i need it i'm just creating it multiple files and then i'll compile it all together if you look at here, this is what we are looking at MCP HTTP plus SSC communication. If you look at all of our previous videos, we have used something called standard input and standard output. You know, STDIU, right? It's a communication protocol. Uh, and now we're going to look at SSC server sent events, right? That's basically how it do, does a HTTP post request and then gets a uh, and gets a JSON encoded message, right, from the server. So if you look at here, I've been uh, I, of course, I will give the link in description so you can go through it. Okay. The good thing about HTTP, and it's, I'll tell you the both pros and cons of HTTP plus SSC. It's a bit, it has some cons when it comes to security, right? So your tokens might get exposed and so on and so forth. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. So you know, the server runs as an independent process and designed to handle multiple client connections simultaneously. Now imagine if you have a server and you have multiple clients, you know, sitting in different locations. The, the multiple clients can connect to the server and you know of course uh, it can of course perform some kind of operations right it requires two endpoints ssc endpoints and http post endpoint the http post endpoint is for a client to send a message to a server so let me show you this image this image will explain everything now you have a client you have a server right first client opens an ssc connection server side server sent event not side excuse me server sent event that's what ssc means now client will first establish a connection with the server right and server will then do an endpoint event trigger now if you look at this endpoint event, let me explain that here you can look at it says establishing a connection clients connects to the ssc endpoints once connected the server will send an event and inform the client of the http post because you're going to make an http post uri from the clients would use to send future messages. Now that's what it does. If you look at here, it says, okay, endpoint event triggered, message exchange, and now it client has to do an HTTP post message to the server. And once it receives it, of course, that's going to be in a JSON formatted message. It's a JSON formatted message that HTTP post messages that have been sent because all of these protocols are built on JSON RPC 2.0 that VS Code uses it uh, within their IDs and a lot of other places. So. You have to do an HTTP post message to the server, and then it, it will return you a JSON encoded message as an SSE event. Event, and then once your task is done, you know you have to close the SSE connection. That's what it is, right? It just terminates the communication by closing the SSE connection. That's that's how the sequence diagram looks like for this. Now, uh, model context in model context protocol, we have streamable HTTP. Right now, this will get replaced HTTP plus SSC. While I while I was recording this video, that was not yet updated, but that will get updated where you'll have streamable HTTP and up to 1.6.0. Uh, uh, oh, I think this was not done yet while I'm recording this video, but it's a good thing to know that how you can use MCP HTTP plus SSC communications alongside standard input out standard input output as well if you want to build your own local servers and clients. Let me show you a quick example here in my IDE. If you look at here, I have a, pro a project called HTTP SSC MCP Starter. I have been using UV 
to work with MCP. Let me show you how you can create this project. You have to come in a directory wherever you want to create a project. In that directory, you have just to do UV in it and the project name. Let's say you want to write HTTP SSC project. And when you hit enter, it will create a project like this, a folder. In that folder, you will have uv.log, you will have a main.py file, you will have readme spy project.2ml where you have you have to define all your dependencies and app project related information. You will have a git ignore and a Python version. That's what we'll have. Now, once you have that project, just do a CD inside it. So let's say you go HTTP SSC project. Excuse me, is a CD. And once you CD inside it, what you can immediately do, you can just do UV VENV to create a virtual environment because you're going to install dependencies and then you just activate, right? CD, uh, uh, VENV script, ampersand, ampersand, activate. If you're on PowerShell, if you have, if you are on Linux, you have to use uh, source activate and have to go to bin, not script. So you activate it. I assume that you have activated your virtual environment. Now, once you activate your virtual environment, you have to create two files. One is client.py and the other is server.py. Let me first walk you through the client.py and in this client.py example, I have taken the previous videos example and my previous video, if you look at this previous video, video number 10, it says when I was walking you through MCP inspector, a tool that helps you test and debug your MCP server locally. So if I play this, right, let me play it. Help you inspect. Let me just write it over here. Now, once you come here on the tools, it, it says fit. So in this video, I so I have shown you read Wikipedia article example that how you can read a Wikipedia article by giving an URL and that parses you output parses the output in a markdown format. That's the MCP server that we built in this video and we tested it through MCP inspector. So I'm going to use the same code, you know, for this, but I'm going to show you how I created a client and a server that's running on HTTP SSC protocol. So if you look at here. I'm using async IO for asynchronous activities. I have some utilities like system trace pack. I'm using URL parse to parse it. And you have to use these two things. First, establish a client session. So I'm using from MCP import client session. By the way, you have to first install all these dependencies. You can see we have beautiful SU4, HTML2 text, MCP CLI request, and streamlit. This repository will be available on my uh, github account i'll give this link in description for this repository let me go back to client.py then we have we are using ssc underscore client right so that's the import now then we have a function called print items now you have to understand when you work with mcp the three three fundamentals three fundamentals modules that we have within mcp are tools resources and prompts so what we are doing with this function we are listing down all those available things. If there is any tool available, this will print it. If there's any resources available, this will print it. If there's any prompt available, this will print it. So in interview, when somebody asks you, tell us the fundamentals about MCP, you have to tell them that MCP has tools, resources, prompts. Of course, you watch my first videos to go through more theory, but these are the things that MCP kind of access it, right? Now, you're just gonna print it, you know, for this, for this thing. Now we have our main function, which is an asynchronous function. If you look at here, it says, I have commented it as well, connect to the MCP server, list its capabilities and optionally call a tool. That's what this function does. It has an argument. It takes your server URL, article URL, whatever. Like if, you see, if you see here, it's an optional thing. We have something by default. It says Wikipedia URL to fetch an article, full URL to SSC endpoint. That's my client code. I'm first showing you the client code. I'll show you the server code, which is already there. Now I have this logic. Of course, this is beautiful soup thingy URL parse. You can see it over here. Now here I'm trying. It's a try thing. Try except if you look at here, async with first step, if the connection has been established, pass the server URL as streams. You can see as streams and async with client session streams as sessions. And then I'm awaiting session to initialize and this will print connected to MCP server. It will give you the server URL and then it will list down all the items which is available for us. And then this gonna, if article URL is there, if there is an article URL, it's just gonna print that, right? So this is what it does. Now you can see it says response, await, adjust the previous code from beautiful soap, get it. And then we have an exception if any error goes through. Now we have this uh, arguments looking at it or whatever we are giving if there's nothing that you just example and so on and so forth. So this is my client. 
that we are running. You can see it over here. Let's go to server.py. Now in server.py, it's pretty simple. We are using, of course, previous code that we have with beautiful soup and whatever. And we have using Starlet. We are using MCP server fast MCP and slicing it through the library that we have. MCP uh, CLI. We have some errors. We have internal errors. Blah blah blah. And this is there. We have initialized SSC client. Here we are initializing SSC server transport, right? Because once the server client server communication has been established, server has to also uh, return back the uh, JSON encoded message, right? Now, here we are ident uh, initializing an identifier. You can see MCP called Wiki. And then I'm, of course, this is how you define a tool through a decorator in, within MCP. It's MCP.tool. And then we have this defined read Wikipedia article. Here, our all the logic goes in, if you see it. Very simple, right? Beautiful soup to extract it, return at the markdown, very simple file. And here we are setting up the SSE transport for message communication. So if you come here on this note, you will find out these are two things it require, right? SSE endpoint and HTTP post endpoint to receive messages and send a message. So that's what we are saying for message exchange. If you go back, you can see it over here, set up. And then we are handling it, handling the SSE. You can find out the scope, receive, send. And then we are using uh, a Starlet app with two endpoint, SSE and message. That's what we need that I shown you in the Notion template just now. And you can see it over here. Uh, we are using these two route and SSE and then this and then running it through UVCon. That's what we are doing. That's how we define a very simple server. And then we have this client. Now, if you make this work, right, you can bring any kind of LLMs logic, any kind of, you know, you don't have to rely on any kind of like client, like Claude, for example, you can do it your own, right? You can create your own client, you can create your own server and those can communicate with each other. So let me just, uh, let me just first, let's run this server here. You know, it's, it's open. I'm already inside it. You can see it says when I when I do UV run server.py, it says UVCon running on localhost 8000. So my server is now running. Let me just uh, activate. Here I'm just activating. Right now, here I'm just going to run the client. Right. When I have to run the client, you can see what I'm doing. I'm saying UV run uh, client.py and then I'm passing up this uh, server URL because if you look at this, let me go to client. I'm already in the client. You can see what it takes. Client.py server URL and then you have to give it like this, right? So server URL, I'm giving it and then I'm giving the link. So this is a Wikipedia link that I have. So I'm giving that. You can see it says UV run and blah, blah, blah. So if you look at here, let me show you the output. If you look at the output, this is the markdown output. Uh, this is fantastic, right? Now let's go up. I mean, that's a Wikipedia page. It will have a lot of content in the output. I mean, so yeah, if you if you if you see that, okay, how do I? Oh, that's very interesting. How do I go? I don't know. I'm using Windsurf. I'm new to Windsurf. But whatever you, you you could see, or maybe if we can open this, let me just open this in terminal. And of course, scripts dot slash activate c dot c dot clean, and you can just use this. Now, if you look at one thing here, let me go back to show you the server as well. If you look at all the logs here, right? If it says first the session ID uh, establishment, you can see session ID is this post messages processing request of type list tool request, list resource request, list prompt request, and then it calls the tool request, right? That's what it does and gives you the output. Now, the end, last thing is that you have to end the connection here. So it, you can find out all the logs here you know, on the server side, whatever is happening, you know, from the client. Now you can see it over here. I hope we can see it till top because it's a huge thing. Yeah. Now, if you look at this, let me make it bigger. It says available tools. You can first see it says connected to MCP server. And we are not using any uh, cloud or something here, you know, to do this task. You can see it says connected to MCP server at HTTP localhost. Available tools are named read Wikipedia article. There's a description that's coming up. It has your input schema. 
you know, over here that says property titles required, blah, 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 and available resources and available prompts. We can also create prompt that's coming in the upcoming videos. We're going to do that pretty soon. I'm going to create a Streamlit application as well and also bring LLM angles and open source models and how we can build our own client server mechanism, right? Now, it says calling read Wikipedia article tool and it gives you the Wikipedia article markdown content. Now you take this content, give it to LLM for a rag or summarize it. In this case, I'm saying, right, to find out any kind of insights you want. This is how great it is right now. But it has problems, guys. Uh, uh, th this has problem because, you know, it's not it's not that secure. I will let you know why it's not secure, because I'm working on a research paper, more of a technical white paper uh, to bring a bit of security concerns right in in these kind of uh, HTTP, SSE, or even streamable HTTP uh, uh, mechanism for communication where it can expose your uh, lot of things, your access tokens and your information and credentials and so on and so forth. So we'll talk about it in upcoming videos. The idea in this video was to introduce you HTTP, SSE, streamable HTTP, how you can create your own client servers. And now we're going to extend this further, right? We're going to use some LLMs into it uh, in future videos and do some kind of summarization task or something. And let's say we build a Streamlit application and how, how we can build a Streamlit application as an MCP host. So that application will become our MCP host. And then let's get uh, work, right? Uh, we, can, we can completely control it. So that's the idea of the future video. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, thoughts, or feedbacks, let me know in the comment box. Uh, if you have any uh, other suggestions, you can also reach out to me through my social media channels. Find those information on channel banner and channel about us. If you like the content, please hit the like icon. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe the channel, guys. That motivates me to create more such videos in your future. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.